So, are we ready? Should I? I shouldn't. I'm waiting for you to say, sir, let's, let's carry on. Ready? So we have a lot of people watching from different parts of the world. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Can we say amen together? Amen. So last week, Wednesday, we started this teaching that is centered on money. The whole idea is about money. That's why we titled it Giving, Offering. Let's talk about it. Let's not shy away from it. Let's talk about it. It's an issue in the body of Christ. It's, it's an issue um, that people touch. They talk about it. Some people don't want to touch it. But let's talk about it. The reason why some don't go to church today is because of the subject of money. There are people today who have been abused because of the issue, the subject of money. We have had a lot of teachings regarding the subject of money. I don't want to just say offering or giving. No. I want, to, I want to call it what it is. Money. Let's stay on that thing called money. A lot of us ministers of the gospel are perceived to be crooks, thieves, lazy, armed robbers and the likes. Because of the issue of money. There are people today who go to church, attend meetings, and don't close their two eyes because they are observing what is happening. And the reason is because of the issue of what? Money. Some people have, because we now live in a time where social media is made available, there are people today who have chosen not to attend church on site, but rather to follow online because of the issue of money. The moment, this is one of those subjects, I told you, that has divided the body of Christ, is still dividing, and will continue to divide the issue of money. So, all manner of names have been given to churches. We have been branded all manner of things because of the issue of money. Let's not say giving. No, no, no. Giving makes it light, sound polite. Let's call it what it is, money. Because that thing you call giving is money. Offering, you're trying to touch it. It's called money. So we were told, we have been told, that when you go to church, make sure you have your brain. So the moment a man is teaching or preaching or prophesying, you are waiting for him. In the place of money. Just mention money. And you are called a fake. You are branded a fake. I began to search the scriptures. And I began to discover certain things. And some ministers of the gospel are not helping matters at all. Reason being... 
I told you last week. I've told you. Some people are jealous. Some people in trying to explain what they perceive to be the principles and the revelations of God, they explain themselves into error. And by that, they quench the move of the Spirit. Because God cannot be wrong. There is a great difference between holy things and unholy things. I think I should start with that. Because I'll be giving you certain scriptures and we'll just be reading it to ourselves and be giving, we'll look at what the Lord says. Let's start with Leviticus chapter 10. I think I should start with that. Let me, let me start with Leviticus chapter 10 verse 10. You may, not, you may not like Leviticus, but let's talk Leviticus. It's not part of my... Mm, but let's go to Leviticus. Chapter 10, verse 10. And that you may put difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. It says you may put a difference. God wants you to put a difference. Give me the amplified. We're going to read some translation so you understand. God wants us to put a difference. Now, look at the amplified. You shall make a distinction and recognize a difference between the holy and the common or unholy and between the unclean and the clean. Let's do New Living Translation, NLT. It says, you must distinguish between what is sacred and what is common. Between what is ceremonially unclean and what is what? Clean. So, we come amongst people and in a time where there are people who are standing on the pulpit who are teaching us to call holy things unholy. Sacred things unholy. The very things that God had called holy. There are those now who are teaching us. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 22. Let's look at verse 23. King James. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, 24, what did he say? Son of man, I want you to say to her, thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. Why? 25. There is a conspiracy of her prophet. Mark the three Ps. You are going to see here now. As, as we read down, you are going to see. He will talk about there is a conspiracy of her prophet in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion, ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. 26. Her priest, remember prophet? Her priest. Her priest have violated my law and they have profaned my holy things <clears throat> when they began to give certain teachings that are now touching as to the holy things he says they profane it they have put no difference between the holy and profane neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and they have hid their eyes from my sabbath 
and I am profaned among them. So we find, this is the third P, her princes. So we have the, the prophet, the priest, and her princes. So you have those messengers. Down, the princes there are the people. Are you with me? Go back to verse 26. Give me the New Living Translation. Look at it. Your priests have violated my instructions. And they have defied my holy things. They make no distinction between what is holy and what is not. So, you find that teaching. It's now there in the body of Christ. Whereby, we are taught to consider all things to have equal weight. To consider all men. The moment you come out and you say, we are not all equal. You are stoned. But we are going to see something from the scriptures. Let every man be a liar, including Pastor Bina. Let God alone be truth. When God was going to release the children of Israel, when he was to speak to Moses and say, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go, there was a, a special message that he gave to Moses to give to Pharaoh. Can you go to Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 18? Exodus chapter 3 and verses number 18. King James. And they shall hearken to thy voice. And thou shalt come. Thou and the elders of Israel. Unto the king of Egypt. And you shall say unto him. The Lord God of the Hebrews had met with us. And now let us go, we beseech thee, three days journey into the wilderness, that we may offer sacrifice to the Lord our God. That we may offer, that is it, that we may sacrifice to the Lord God. That one of the basic reasons as to why God wanted them to come out. Was so that they could come and sacrifice to him. Our God is a God of sacrifice. You know I sat there and I began to look. What is in sacrifice that God takes so much pleasure in it? Can you give me First Samuel chapter 1 verse 21? First Samuel chapter 1 verse 21. And the man Elkanah and all his house, they went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. The yearly sacrifice and his vow. Psalm 50 verse 18. Psalm 50 verse 18. We we'll read 18 to 22 or something. We'll just take it down. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consented with him and hast been a partaker with adulterers. 19. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. 21. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thy own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I, may, I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thy eyes. 22. Now consider this. Ye that forget God, least I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver you. Uh-huh. Who so offered praise... Glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. Stop. Give me that in the amplified. Watch this now. He who brings an offering of praise, 
and thanksgiving honors and glorifies me. And he who orders his way aright, who prepares the way that I may show him, to him I will demonstrate the salvation of God. Drop to verse 24. Keep it in the Amplified. Watch this. He says he who brings an offering. We came to talk about it. That's exactly what we came to talk about. He who brings... I said the issue. When we say you are bringing an offering, it's polite. Let's call it what it is. He who brings money. Because the whole argument is that someone is collecting from you while you are there being foolish. But this is God. He who brings an offering. And I asked you last week, when you bring this offering, where do you take it to? We looked at, do you remember? You need to go back and check all of this because we can, we can, I can't go back. That will take us back and back and back and back. And we might never get there again. But you just need to understand this. Now. Are you still with me? Are you still here? We're taking it little by little. Little by little. A lot of foundational work was, was done last week Wednesday. A lot of foundational work. So here now I'm adding the blocks. And the blocks that I'm adding will look sometimes. Will look clumsy. Difficult. It, it will look like am I understanding what is he saying. But it, it is the blocks. Because the foundation had already been laid. And. You just sit down and begin to observe what is he trying to say. Now, let me put a question before you. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. Verse 11 to 14. Let's read 11 to 14. 1 Corinthians 9, 11. Now, we are reading to verse 14. Follow me now. This is, this is Paul. And I know that this is the New Testament. Huh? Okay. Let's go. If we have sown unto you spiritual things. He wants to ask a question now. Is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? He's just asking a question. Stay there. He says... I have blessed you with spiritual things. So he's asking. Is it really bad for your pastor to drive a Mercedes Benz? No, no, no. no. Don't be in a hurry. Because he he uses the word canal. Because they say, Jesus Christ that you follow, did he drive Benz? Canal, canal. Because Benz is considered canal. We have blessed you with spiritual things. Look at the exchange. What I gave you is spiritual. He says, is it now bad if you buy me coke? Because it's canon. Paul is the one asking, not Pastor Bina. This is the Bible. Give me the message translation. Don't, don't go to 12. It did too fast. Stay, in, stay on 11 first. If others be partakers uh-uh. 11. Ha. So, if we have planted spiritual seed among you, is it out of line to expect a meal or two from you? That, that's what I wanted. It. A meal. That's food where they wash and cook. He says, is it bad if we expect it? The man is just asking a question. Now, you must understand, this question did not just come. He had people from Nigeria (laughs) that attacked him with the same thing that they are attacking us. So he's now asking a question. He's a man of God. It's in the Bible. We're coming to, I will piece some things. Just follow. So he's asking, is it too much too? Paul is saying, is it bad if someone says, sir, the message or the prayers of last week blessed me and I did some business. Sir, I bought that car for you. He says, is it bad? No, no, the man is asking a question. Give me the New Living Translation. 
For those of you who believe that a man of God should be broke and poor, this is the question. Since we have planted spiritual seed among you, aren't we entitled? That's where I'm coming to now. Because, oh. Can we go back to what we looked at last Wednesday under, under the offering? I told you sacrifice. There was some, there was a word I also used. Huh? Go, go, go. There was a word. There was a word. When you owe, owe someone and you need to, it's called a tribute. Do, do, do you remember? It, when it comes to tribute, you owe. You pay. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, close it. Come to today's. Leave the book now. Come to today. Now, you owe in tribute. You come to. That was what Cain and Abel did when they brought. They felt God is the Lord of the whole earth, the ground, and he was the one who commanded their seed. So they brought a tribute to him as Olorioko to say, Sir, we came to thank you. So they came to give God his own entitlement. His agent and agreement fee. So Paul is saying something. That when I stand here as an apostle, I'm, I'm your pastor now. And I stand here and I'm teaching you spiritual. You know the problem with people? They feel that that thing that I'm teaching or that thing that the men of God are dispensing are too light compared to the weight of what they give. So they say, you are doing a little job compared to what you are getting. But Paul says, we have sown spiritual seed among you. Aren't we entitled, entitled to have to a harvest of physical food and drink. I'm bringing translation so you see. Because, you know, they, they, they want you to believe that this money that you cast here, that we, are, we collect it to give angels. It is a mindset. So some people are letting you know now that you know they are using your money as though it's a big revelation. That's why I told you that some of the drink they brought here, I gave some of you to drink. That means you have you right. Angels don't pack money after service. It's Pastor Joy. We see them when they come and Sister Chino. So we see Nazonaga to come and collect that same thing that you put together. It's for you to know. Don't make it. And I'm going to show you something. You will understand. It, the thing is very simple. What we communicate is spiritual seed. The seed is in prayer. The seed is in the word. The seed is in the wisdom. The seed is in knowledge. The seed is in the advice. All we communicate is spiritual seed. Then he's asking, is it too much if we get from you some carnal thing? In the carnality, it defines it to be food and drink. So when you come and jam us eating rice and coke, you say blood of Jesus. Why? What is the blood for? Go back to King James. No, I want to know what the blood is for. For instance, you, you attend a meeting, let's say, charity, and you see them men of God and you came with a camera and this this lot of food and chicken and wine, sorted wine. And these men, after they are prayed, they are eating. You now snap and say, see what they are using your money for. Paul is asking the question. Huh? Verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Message translation. Watch. Others demand plenty from you in these ways. Don't we who have never demanded deserve even more? 
But we are not going to start demanding now what we have always had a perfect right to. Our decision all along has been to put up with anything rather than to get in the way or distract from the message of Christ. That the reason I don't take money from people is so that I don't get distracted from the message of Christ. The reason, the major thing I was called for was to dispense the message of Christ. Not to now stand. Give me the amplified. To stand and start collecting money. Gate fee. Watch this. If others share in this rightful claim upon you, do not we have a still better and greater claim? However, we have never exercised this right, but we endure everything rather than put a hindrance in the way of the spread of the good news, the gospel of Christ. Can we go back to King James verse 13? Because we are going to verse 14, so I'm taking them one by one. Open your eyes and ear. Do you, do you not know that they which minister about holy things, so there are holy things. These holy things now are the things that some people have taught you not to regard. Even in the New Testament, God is telling you that there are holy things. He says, those who, those who know, do you not know that they which minister about holy things, leave of the things of the temple. No, sir, 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 sir. Sir, I don't, I, sir, I don't like that. I don't like the way you ended it. You should have continued in the same vein you started it. What do I mean in the same vein? Do you not know that they which live about holy things live of the holy things? But instead of continuing that, he broke it down to let you know that the holy things are found in the temple. That the things you found in the temple are holy things. That money that somebody cast there now is a holy thing. And the only person permitted are those who minister on the holy things. Hear what he says about it. They should leave of the things. They should leave. Egoimbo. They should leave of the holy things. And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. There's a problem there. Little word. That's English. With. So g- g- let's go to Amplified. I'm not in a hurry. That's why I started it. You know, people want to make argument. C- come, just find your way to gifting church. Let's talk about it. Do you not know that those men who are employed in the services of the temple get their food from the temple? Question. Who employed them? Who employed me? Because all of you came. The day you came, you met me. Who came before me? Because if you came before me, that means you were dead the day I was employed. If I came before you, that means I was employed before you. Come on here. How many of you day you came here, you met? You met somebody. You met a preacher. That means I was employed. Have you ever seen me say, let me quickly go and enter my master. Is that you could do? Have you heard that? But I have an employee. Someone who employed a boss. So when I said, thank you, Father, that's, that's the one who employed me. Then he says, way to understand English. He says, do you not know that those men who are employed in the services of the temple, which means I'm not the only one, they get their food. If he's paying you, it is his English. Because I told you the problem with fighting, offerings, first fruit, is not... It's not the name is not their problem. It is the wood they are giving it to. That's why I'm, sh- I'm showing you this one now. He says we get our food. It's an open secret now. When he is now naked. So you expect me to take this one thousand and tear it and say, Lord, unto thee, O Lord. Do 
I lift up this money? I don't know who cast it. But whoever casted this thing. Eh? God bless you. Because we should live by it. If you are angry. You know. There are some polite. Polite irresponsible men of God. Sorry to use that word. Irresponsible in spiritual things. Because they come out to say. Come and show me if I have ever touched. The offering. Sir, you are irresponsible in understanding spiritual matters. You are trying to claim holy. Letting God know that you are holy. Holier than him. Sir, you just sinned. Go and confess. Because he said, I give it to you to live by. We are not there. We are not there. We are not there with you. You say, I don't touch it. Do you have a business? You know, people bless me. Which people? I will show you now that there are different offerings. Since today we want to look at it. There are different offerings. They won't cast on the altar and they won't cast into your account. Ah. Eh? <laughs> the one you don't touch is the one you feel that is cast. The reason you don't touch it is because you are underlaying a principle that this is lesser. There's one greater. So you have gone above this. So now, are you with me? There are those in They drop five hundred naira, one thousand. You have passed that level because your house rent alone, where you live, and the things around you in a month, in a year, goes beyond. It so so it runs into so much millions. So these things you use it to help we do. But there are those who call you man of God. Let's say what they get in the offering on Sunday is 200,000. But three calls you got in a day, three calls you got in a day has put in 60 million into your account. Why are you looking at that? Why are you looking at that? So you're going to come out to tell us. You will surely tell us. I don't touch this. You don't touch it because you don't need it. Something is higher. But that you don't touch it does not mean you are not the one giving, giving the permission for it to be used. If you give the permission for it to be used, you have touched it. Uh -uh. What are you making it look like? Oh, you are a thief too. Brother. <laughs> Can they do anything without you? No. So if I say, if there's a sister there, okay, give that sister... 200,000. <laughs> From where, sir? From the other one. Abi? Who gave the permission? Who touched it? There are different ways. We used to sing. Only you can go where no man can go. Have you seen God in Bariga? But he's in Bariga. You don't touch it because it's lesser compared to we will see something. So, a man who is growing, who is growing, there are people, huh? there are ministries today and ministers today, if they ever see someone who cast 1,000 naira as an offering or a seed, they will make the person a deacon because the highest is the highest currency. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's big. Someone just dance, dance, dance. Just drop it. All the pastors will just, eh, mark that guy. Because they are used I'm telling you, there was a time in this ministry we could not give a seed of 1,000. I was the highest giver. And yet I was the one giving the instruction. <laughs> the man is asking the question. Don't you know that those men who are employed in the service of the temple get their food from the temple? And that those who tend the altar share with the altar in the what? Offerings brought. So this evening now, when I finish now, you will give offering. All of us will give. So I should cast, I should carry all of them and say, Father, we don't need it. Suck away. Give me message translation. We just, we, just, we just come out to contract. 
As a more, as a more in your village, the fowl and goat that they bring to offer, <laughs> who eats them? And you never find people ganging up and say, the SMO is eating too much. Go and, go and take it. But because we can relate with people. And do you know why? The fear of sacred things have been removed. The fear of holy things have been removed. We have now come into a generation that lack the fear of God. Because some people from the altar are jealous enough to start teaching. It's a lie. They are all the same thing. All these people they are the same thing. They, you are using your money. They are using your money. Whose money will we use before? God sent you. Satan gave you problem. God gave you direction. He called a man, gave him an anointing. He now dragged you that have the issue to the man that had the anointing. He now used the anointing that he gave to the man. That, am- that anointing that he gave to the man. He used it to heal you. You are now shouting, glory, glory. He now said, don't just bless him with healing only. Bless him now. You now go out to the field and you are blessed. He now come, the same God, enters your heart. Say, go and give something to that, my servant. You now bring something and say, man of God, I, I came to say thank you for the blessing you gave to me. You now collect it. The same person doing all of this thing is still God. So we should take that thing that you brought and throw it away. You are now doing what? That's pride. That's huge pride. And that's what many people are doing in ministry. They feel that, well, I went to school, I came out with good grade, I'm an engineer, I'm a doctor, I'm a teacher, I'm working, I use my money to run the ministry. It is not so, sir! You are, you are destroying the laws and the principles of the kingdom. That's not the way it functions. You will make your people poor. It's the reason why you pastor a broke church. I told God from the beginning, our people must be blessed. He said, follow 1 Samuel 1.21. There must be sacrifice. Then as they go to work, he opens doors. Listen, don't tap the blessing of windows. It's too small. I told you last week Wednesday. And I shall open the windows of heaven. What are you doing with window? What are you doing with window? The Bible says, and the doors opened by their own accord. You don't like blessings from doors? You don't like gates? You are looking for window. Tell two people, be coming down. I have not started the message. Am I? All I'm concerned with right now is that you not use our decision to take advantage of others. That's just the problem. To take advantage of others. You see, look at, look at. Many of you, many believers never knew that Pastor Kumi is very wealthy. But because he preaches holiness and he lives simple like a man of God, people don't know. Until this new generation madness came. These people that they gave small tithe of 15 million, they now enter private jet, snap it, chaka. That's when the world woke up and said, look at all these men of God. What is the business with a man of God telling you that the canvas or shoe that he's wearing is gushy? Oga, oga, you oga, you oga, oh, I broke on. That's you, I don't know what is wrong with you. You saw some, you saw some Yahoo guys living like that you now want to live we are not celebrities we are men of god you don't live a celebrity life you show us your wristwatch see the one you see the one i'm wearing come and snap it it's a problem see my my tie my tie is um they they purposely show the name People quickly Google it. Because we're in a crazy world. They now say see. But you never told them it was a gift. <laughs> you know, you but Angel was preaching. Was preaching in Zimbabwe. As he was preaching, the anointing was praying. He just removed his suit. He was preaching. He was preaching. The moment he comes close with people, just fall. He now said, oh. He now told them. He said, do you know why? I now know why. He said, this, this tie is anointed. It was given to me by Benihin. He said, this tie is $5,000. He told them them. But you know, if he had said this tie, people that know the tie, snap the tie, they'll just quickly Google 
and say, see the amount they said that time. It's from your offering. But he said, it was from a, it's a gift from boy, Pastor Benny. But Pastor Benny got it from someone in Dubai. Someone gave it to him. So he gave it. Can you see how? The phones I'm using, all the gadgets are gifts. If I come out with them and come out, you say, Chai! Offering, don't finish. Oh God, no buyer. Are you following what I'm saying? But I'm wise to say it. <laughs> of phrase, of, not be that one. The truth of the matter is, <laughs> can you see that they are, they are new currency? Even you, you saw it. Let us not deny the fact that we saw it. It's, let me bring it. It's new. <laughs> it's very new. It's coming from the bank. So we should take it and put it in the water. It, those who live have been talking since. <laughs> Celebrate God. It is the truth they don't want to hear. So I'm breaking it down for you to hear. So that you will be more angry that God chose a man. It's the truth. But I, did I tell her? To, don't worry. Depriving them of what is rightly theirs. You know, don't you? That has always been taken for granted. That those who walk in the temple live off the proceeds of the temple. And that those who offer sacrifices at the altar eat their meals from what has been sacrificed. You know why? Because you are working for a deity. The sister that gave this offering, when her testimony fully mature, mature she will share something that the Lord has done for her. You will, you will bring out the, the prophecy. You will see the day I prayed for her. Don't think that this offering has always been coming. No. We all start from somewhere. That would distract me. King James, verse 14. Even so, hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. He ordained it. When he told Jeremiah, before you were created in your mother's womb, I ordained you. Part of the ordination is to live from what comes from the... <laughs> Bro, baby, you, don't like the you don't like this message. It's, it's making you angry. <laughs> Mama Are you with me? Tell someone, this is the truth. They tell you, you know, um, Peter was a fisherman. The day he met Christ, he stopped. The ministry of Christ who supported him for that three and a half years, how was he living? The Bible said they had a bag of offering. Jesus, your God. That is, that is humility. That they have a bag of offering. That's humility. It is pride not to have the bag of offering. It's to tell God that you can. And you know one thing? You will impoverish the people. You will impoverish the people. Because this is an exchange. You give material things for something spiritual. When you left, you don't see it, but it follows you. The law. The Old Testament is divided into sections. Right. Number one. The Old Testament. When you talk about the Old Testament section of the Bible, it's divided into about four. Let me give you. Number one, there is the beginning. Have you written the beginning? Number two, the law. Number three, the prophets. Number four, the Psalms. The Psalms. You don't know Psalms? Why is that home? 
You don't know what Psalm says. You close the Bible. Go home. <laughs> Are you with me? Give it to me. First one, the beginning. You know what the beginning is? Genesis. 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 Then there is the law. God's intention was never the law. The law was never his plan. It was for them to continue living. Then he will find a point of remedy where he will remedy man. Man's sin. But the people, when they came out of Egypt, Exodus chapter 19 verse 18, they demanded of God something. They, in their pride, you will see it. Exodus 19, 18. Before this time, before this time, there was no law. Exodus 19, 18. And Mount Sinai, oh, was all together on a smoke because the Lord descended. Are you there? The Lord descended. Descended where? Upon it in what? In what? In what? In fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. This is God coming down to them. And there's a reason he came down. He's coming down for them to see him. Because they demanded that we want to see you. So he began to descend. Mountain shaking. Fire burning. The people shouted. Look at verse 19. When you read verse 19, 20, you now see them saying, And when the voice of the Lord trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by voice. When you now, as you read verse 20, 20, the people came to a point where they said, And the Lord came down upon the mountain and at the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to come up the mountain. When the people now saw how God responded, they said, Moses, tell him not to speak. Let him be speaking to you. You speak to us. But there was a reason because this was not. The reason was in verse 8. Now go to verse 8. Oh, before we get to verse 8, let's do verse 6. Mm, verse 6 will be good. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. God has adopted them as his people. Verse 7. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord had commanded them. They find it too simple. It says that all. Verse 8. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord, all that the Lord would speak to us, we will do. It, this, is, this is King James. When you read it literally, they said God should give them whatever laws that he feels good, that they are capable of giving. It. Give me the New Living Translation. Verse 8. So they demanded of God laws. Prior to this time, it was all in the beginning. And all the people responded together. We will do everything the Lord has commanded. This is pride. God said, ah, you will do everything. He gave them laws. 630. And told them, let it start. Shebi say you will do. But remember, this was the law. But prior to the law, there was the first one, the beginning. And all of the offerings you see that God now forced and institutionalized under the law were things they practiced in the beginning that he never gave as a law. They did it free willy. Nobody forced them to do it. The very first offering we saw was in Genesis chapter 4 from verse 3. That is where you find the law of first fruit. No man was forced to do it. When it came to the law, it now became a law. Understand something. Under the law, there's something you must understand. There is the principle and the practice of the law. The principle and the practice. Am I talking too much? Is it too heavy? Are you understanding it? Little by little. Mm. That's why I told you I'm building the blocks in my scatter. Scatter here, scatter. But you, are, you gather all of them. 
The law has its practice and the law has its what? Principles. First fruit was the beginning. Genesis 4. Fight was Genesis 14. Every offering you find, Genesis, Genesis. Because they demanded of the Lord and said, bring whatever you want, we will fulfill it. It became a law under the law. Understand the principles and the practice. Matthew 5, 17. Scripture of Paul. Who read scripture to the extent he will bend. You say, what is it with this man? Because it's scripture. You know, sometimes people have told you the reason why people argue. There's a pastor listening to me right now. You're telling your congregation, God has cancelled this, God has cancelled this, just come and go. Don't attend that church, I'm telling you. Because they are not following the principles of God. You will be poor. You will be very poor. They say, hey, what about uh, Tangote? We are talking about kingdom. That's why you need to listen to my message. Go and listen. That man operates by another kingdom. This is God's kingdom. And you cannot tell God how he runs his kingdom. If Bill Gates like, let him chop his money. That's his problem. The thing is, we have not been fully taught the wisdom of God. That's why we still have ministers. We have believers in Christ who cannot produce anything. We pray too much. We pray too much. Albert Einstein's mother delivered him to God. Look at the equation that changed the world. That mind was touched by God. It was touched by God. You sit down here. Baraba, baraba, baraba. They have blessed you. You go out there. There is the voice of... In, in, in Psalm 19, the Bible tells... Don't, don't, don't touch it. Because if you remove this one. It tells us about the wind of wisdom that is blowing. Are you open to it? Do you know that between the hour of 4 to 6, the wind of wisdom blows? And by that time, that's when we are sleeping. Ideas are floating. You wake up and sit down. And say, Lord, reveal to me. I tell you something enters here. What is this thing? Put it down. It might sound foolish. Are you with me? Earth shaking ideas. Do you know some believers don't evolve? They don't evolve. They are the same yesterday, today and forever. They don't evolve. Things are changing. They are the same. And you are blaming God that nothing is happening around you. No sir. You are not evolved. You are not evolving. You are still the same. Old school. This is a lot. So if you are in this kingdom, look at it. First fruit is Genesis 4. Genesis 14 is tithing. What are the two things that causes trouble in this in the whole body of Christ? Tithe and first fruit. That's in the beginning. He now mandated them under the law. What did Jesus say? Don't think that I am come to destroy the law or the prophet. Do you remember? The, the Old Testament, I told you. The beginning. Did, did, did Jesus talk about the beginning here? Huh? Did he touch the beginning? Why is he not touching the beginning? Because the beginning has never been a problem. Where the problem is, is the law and the prophet. The Psalms is not a problem. They don't see anything in the Psalm. He said, you think, why didn't he say, did you think, are you following me? He said, you think I came to destroy the law or the prophet? I am not come to destroy. I came to fulfill. Fulfill means to add and complete it. I came to add and complete it. Hear me. I sound this as a warning to every church member. You believe in the grace in this house. 
Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Don't play with your sight. Don't play with your first fruit. Don't play with your offerings. It is for your good. God is not hungry. And if your anger is that when you drop it, pastor will use it, hold it. Because surely we will use it. And if you don't want us to use it, keep it. And in keeping it, something will surely take it. And that thing that will take it, you will still not like it. Are you me? That's the anger. Oh God, this one you are laughing. That's it. He said, I came to fulfill it. In the whole Old Testament, the whole of Genesis, that section, you find the two priesthood before the law ever came. The two priests we ever find the Bible mentioned were two. Melchizedek first and Jethro, Moses' father in law. Those were the two priests. One is divine. The other is mortal. The other blessed Abraham. Gave him the earth and the heaven. The other one in Exodus 18 advised Moses as his father-in-law. Before Levi was now given. And out of that Levi, Aaron was chosen. That's where you have the Levitical priesthood. Which is the Aaronic priesthood. Aaron became the priest under the Levitical order. But that is the one, the practice that is done away with. But the principle of it, way back, started back then in Genesis 14. And he's telling you, the one I came to do away with is the Levitical Aaron. Because the moment, look at it, in Genesis 29, you find them. The moment, Rhea gave birth, Leah gave birth to who? Levi. The next one, the next son that followed was Judah. Praise and where did that priest Melchizedek came from? Praise. Meaning that this one came. He take it away the first that he might establish the second. Understand scriptures. People are there. Blah, 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 blah. No. We are no longer under this one. He's gone. The practice of it. Nobody is telling you to bring gold. Nobody is telling you to bring pigeon. Nobody is telling you to do that. But there are certain practices that preceded the law. And that practice, one of them is the first fruit and the fight. It's your offering. Show your money. But there are a couple of things you need to understand about this, your money. Because if you don't understand about this, your money, there's going to be a problem. Numbers chapter 3, verse 11 to 13. Numbers 3, 11 to 13. Are you learning something? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Alright, 12. And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel, instead of all the firstborn that opened the mattress. Among the children of Israel, therefore the Levites shall be mine. The Levites are the priests. He says, the people that are supposed to be priests are the firstborn. Remember the firstborn of Jacob was not qualified, Reuben. So he took it and gave it to Levi. So if God can take what he's supposed to be and give to another, he still can cancel out the whole thing. He said, now Levite is mine. Look at verse 13. Because all the firstborn are mine, for on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Mine shall they be, I am the Lord. So your beast, the first of it, belongs to me. Who do you give it to? I have chosen Levi. Go and give it to them. From that one that they take, that you brought to them, they will now take out the one that is mine, and they will keep the rest. This is God's order. You say, no, I don't like it. Why would God treat us like that? 
What are their duties? This priest you find in the Old Testament. They do a lot of work. Because sometimes we just think they are lazy. We just look at them and say they are not doing anything. Like you can come in and see me with the part. You see? This is all it takes to just be a pastor. Wow, so easy. I like it. Have you gone to a ministry of works before? Have you seen people who work for, for, for states, government, and federal level? Some, some of your teachers come to a goosey. They come to class with a goosey. Then they will give you to be, to be open. <laughs> Sometimes you go. They will tell you you need a particular thing. You want to register your kids. Tell you go. You enter their office. They will start Jesus. They will wait outside. And at the end of the month, they get salary. True or false? I beg you, stop deceiving us. These priests have different assignments, ranging from different things. Health inspection. When Jesus healed those, those guys with, with leprosy, what did he say? Go and meet the priest, let them examine. So these people check. And they, they touch, and yet they are not infected. Oh God, this. You see all these people, pastors and all these members that are talking rubbish. They are hungry people. It's jealousy. Oga, I've won the suit. Is your own? If a member goes to the market and buys me suit, I should burn it. Because I'm working for the Lord. And I'll be going naked. Come and help. There was a time, <laughs> there was a time somebody came and was telling me, he's a member. I think, I think Bromosis Br- Br- will remember that man. There was a man of God somewhere in Barriga one time, one morning. He came to the altar. He was crying. They said, why are you crying? He said, the children didn't eat last night. Remember, I said, child, our pastor. Then I started contributing money for the wife to go and buy Gary cook soup that morning while the pastor will be preaching. That's the kind of life that people envisage for men of God. So, you can imagine, back on on Sunday morning. <laughs> it's a brothers and sisters. <laughs> brothers and sisters. <laughs> Well, that's not eating diseases. <laughs> Belly is ugly. <laughs> you know, statue say, "Una say, child, all you can be, can be, can be." What is the anointing he gave you for? What is he for? <laughs> you know what Paul said? We are considered poor, but we are making many rich. So why we are raising people to become rich? They are coming back. Papa Omar said the anointing he gave is expensive. He said if you can give, if that anointing you have, you can channel it into giving women that are believing God for fruit of the womb. He said, I tell you, you will never be broke in your life. You have 5,000 people that attend your meeting and you pray. God answered the prayer of 50. You will not be poor. He doesn't need to answer the prayer of everybody. Because if he answer all their prayer in one day, they will not attend the next service. <laughs> Even God is very wise. <laughs> Celebrate the wisdom of this God. Is he me that? <laughs> Brother, me, you are the thing is entry. It's God. All the people that came out for testing, is, your, is, is not all of them that pastor prayed for. Why is it that some? He'll give them this season. This will come. Why you are eating that one, eating that one? He answered another one. <laughs> they will come. They now, hey, go on. They will now go and come and see what God is doing. That's what, eh, they will now come. Ooh. The man of God, take it. All of them will receive. Inside the 50,000 that came, 300 will come and say, ah, you say testimony day for that church. Why won't testimony day for that church? When you see 300 people stand down and say they want to give testimony, there's no time to take all of them. So I came here, I was having a headache. Oh. And one eye blind. Today I can see. My daughter even sent me $50,000 from... And I'm here to thank the Lord. You see the pastor smile. <laughs> $50,000. In year 5000 Now this economy. That dollar is 1005 Calculate here. Pia, pia, pia. All the pastors will buy a car. They'll come out and tell you, Come and see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken... A... Why won't he take it? He gave you something to bless the people. They are prosperous. You are blessed. It's the law of exchange. But when you have 22 members, 
Four attend midweek service. Only four. It is with anger you are preaching. Those of you will not come. <laughs> Leviticus 27 verse 14. <laughs> if we go through all of these laws, it's going to take us time. <laughs> When a man shall sanctify his house to be holy unto the Lord, then the priest shall estimate it. They have a whole lot of work. They do a lot. I wrote down some proper things. Health inspection, logistic to legal administration, prepared animals to sacrifice. They bore the punishment of the people's transgression. They diagnosed various skin diseases, offered treatment, and gave a clean bill of health. That this is, when you study the book of Leviticus, Deuteronomy, you will see the assignment. They don't rest. They interpret the law, did property ev- ev- evaluation, they tell you this land is... You, haven't you read... When you start Leviticus, huh? Deuteronomy, and Numbers, especially Numbers, you now see where they are numbering the land. This land belongs to this one. Do you think it's, it's, it's a day job? God appointed and said, you are mine. So this is your assignment. When they finish, the people come to offer sacrifices. They take them. You now say, no. They should not touch our thing. It belongs to us. We don't go agree. Oh. We don't go agree. Write this down. Contribution and offering are not the same. <laughs> Do you know what they call a kawu? <laughs> now, watch this. If in a church, huh? We can call the five of you come first. Five of you. Okay, all of you, come. Come come and stand here. So let's say you hold this. Face them. Come and stand behind him. Come front. Stand behind. All of you. So, they said, all of them came out and said they want to buy this thing. So we are going to contribute five, five thousand to buy this thing. Eh? Even in the church. So they start contributing five, five thousand. So they now said, the person in charge is this brother. And you are the one to buy this thing. And when we contributed, we got sixty thousand. And we said, sixty thousand, how much is this thing? They said, you go and buy it. So, he took the money, went to the market, and saw this thing for fifty thousand. And bought it. Everyone here has the right to ask questions and check if he truly bought this thing. You know why? It's contribution. So, if he said I bought it 50,000 and I took transport 5,000, the remaining money is 5,000. They decide. It's, even, it's, it's, it's a church. They decide and say, okay, for the stress, keep the 5,000. Or, no, one of them Oh yeah, the choir brought wicked. <laughs> she will say, no, bring the 5,000, divide them, give us our change. God will not say anything. Why? It's contribution. Thank you. Oh yeah, go. So, in contribution, you have the right to know what the money is used for. Even though it's done in the church, you have the right. But, Offering is to seize, to lose control of. She has given this. I don't know who cast this. Can I tell you something? You will contact leprosy spiritually when you decide to know what the offering you gave to God. There are people who try to, and that is why watch do you know in UK, in UK, church is not taxed. They are placed under charity. When a church gathers in a month, 10,000 pounds, huh? the government give them, they add something to it and give them. And they say, take. That is, that's why you see the economy boosting. They have sense. 
That means the government is supposed to be giving me something for running the church. And that makes it beautiful. When you say, okay, the church, we want to see your account. Yes. You can now say, okay, this is what the people contributed and this is what we have been using. We help these people, we help these people. Beautiful. So in a month, you got 3,000 pounds. Wow. Give them another 1,500 pounds. So the church takes it. The pastor takes it and is happy. He continues to work. Because they are also easing the burden from the government. In Nigeria. When you want to know what the offering is used for, the offering you gave you is your own. The moment you drop it here, pam, if you drop it, it ceases to be yours. Don't say, I want to find out what is used for. Then you find some people who say, we are going to show you we are transparent in the... No. That thing is human wisdom. It's not God's wisdom. And God frowns at such things. I'm teaching you deep things tonight. If you come, after you cast the offering, and you see them licking ice cream with the offering. Serious ice cream. <laughs> Go home and give thanks to God. After all, I don't know who was telling us the story of something that happened many years ago. They offer Fanta to... to bro, bro, by your... The uncle. They said they went to the river to do sacrifice. They, they told them to... They, they, pour, they, they bought Fanta, Fanta, Fanta and Coke. They poured it. The, brother, the uncle just gave the other guy a sign. The guy understood. When they left, they came back. <laughs> Sat down, drank three, three. When they were full, they went to. The next day, they came again. They drank, until the Fanta finished. They dropped the plastic there for them. So when the people that offered a sacrifice saw it, they said, wow, the gods have accepted it. <laughs> God. Romans 15 26. Are we learning something? I'm just being raw. That's just it. Romans 15 26. For it had pleased them of Macedonia and Asia to make a certain contribution for the poor saint which are Jerusalem. Certain contribution. Exodus 23.15 They made a contribution for the saint who are Jerusalem. Poor saint. Poor people. Can you see what they gave to the poor? is a contribution. Exodus 23.15 Thou shalt keep the feast of the unliving bread. Thou shalt eat unliving bread seven days as I commanded thee. In the time appointed of the month be. For in it thou camest out from Egypt and none shall appear before me empty. Why? Come with an what? Offering. First Chronicles 16.29 First Chronicles 16.29 Let me just show you what the offering does. It does. What is it for? First Chronicles 16.29 Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. That means your offering is a sign of worship. First Chronicle, First Corinthians fifteen twenty three, First Corinthians fifteen twenty three. In case you meet people who will argue and tell you first fruit is not Christ has become our first fruit. First Corinthians fifteen twenty three. Watch this. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit. They say what? Christ the first. They say what? Christ the first fruit. They say what? Christ the first. Fruit. They say what? Christ. Did you see? What the Christ? Who is the first fruit? Christ. He didn't say Christ, the first fruit offering. They say, you see, you're not supposed to give. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. If Christ is the first fruit offering, he says, then they afterward. So what is he saying? Amplify it. So you understand. Because people just give you, yes, they say, do what? Do what, do what. But each in his own rank and turn. Christ, the Messiah, is the first fruit. Then, those who are Christ, Christ's own, will be resurrected at his coming. So, he is the first fruit, tasting spiritual death. First, for all of us. It is testing the spiritual death. First, 
then all of us. That he tasted it and came out means that we have hope. That all of us will be resurrected. That's what he's saying. Are you with me? Message translation. Message. But we have to wait for our own turn. Christ is first. Then those with him at his coming. Can you see? At his coming. Not at the church where you give it. At his coming. They will impoverish you. I'm telling you the truth. Romans 11, 16. When you take your first fruit and dance before the Lord, what was happened? Concerning Christ now, Romans eleven sixteen. Concerning Christ, Romans eleven sixteen. What did he say? He says behind Romans eleven sixteen, King James, please. If the word first fruit be word holy, the lump is also word holy. And if the root be holy, so are the word branches. Let's do this quickly. Reward for offering. Write it. Let me show you some of the rewards you get when you give offerings. The first reward you get when you cast your offering before the Lord is that it gives you access. Your offering gives you access to certain riches, certain inheritances. Yes, it is your inheritance in Christ legally. But I have seen legal broke believers very legally blessed but at the same time legally broke because that it is yours have you ever have you has this thing ever happened to you they tell you, you we can see your money but it has not dropped <laughs> you see your account balance you are looking at it 15 million but it has not dropped they tell you <laughs> you can't assess it it's hanging somewhere it's your inheritance but many of you have inheritance that are what Hanging does not drop. Offering gives you access. That means it drops. And I'm here, it drops. Race course. Some of you know the, our currency is by text. You to show you the level. Car five hundred. You are not. We to show you the. Le- Help me ask the people how far they know what I'm saying. It gives you what. Access. Number two, offering gives you riches and prosperity. Well, the, the first one is what? Access. Let's read the scripture. Proverbs 18 16. <laughs> the way some of you are looking at me. Proverbs 18 16. Oh, well, I'm done with this. The next teaching about giving and money and all of that will be in the conference, convention. There's something higher I want to talk about. Not. I'm just doing this to answer some, some of you that are joining us for the first time. You know, you have not been in this church for quite some time. And for those who have been, and for some reason, they started slacking. You started drinking some water. Nenyo zimenyo. Someone came back, you know, said, sir, I just want to say thank you. Gave an envelope. It was $5,000. I said, come and thank me again. How would you look at me and give me 10000 A brother invited... There was a wealthy man, one, and he came while we were using Beverly. I've shared this before. So he came to the office he, up. So that day was on a Thursday, so he came to see me. So he had booked, so I sat down there to wait for him. So he came with two, people, two persons. So this brother, he, he had already said, ah, you know, you shouldn't go to see a man of God empty-handed. So he came with two envelopes. 
hundred hundred thousand. Now, you say, how do I know? By the Spirit. Not, he didn't tell me by the Spirit. I saw the, I saw, the Lord told me he came with envelope. So he sat down and we talked. So I, I told him what he came for. He was so happy. Prayed for him. Now, when I prayed for him, they knelt down, prayed for him, blah, 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 blah. And he left. When he was going, he went with the envelope. Now, it was the person that invited him. And I said, ah. So they met down. They said, you came back with the envelope. He said, that man is bigger than 100,000. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I gave you counsel from the Lord. He gave me 100,000. For what? It's not like I place a price tag. If he had given me, I would have still blessed him. I would have still made use of it. But he rated you and said no. He said no. This guy knows 100,000. He walked out of it. When he would come to now see me, the next time, <laughs> the Lord is good. <laughs> you don't. That's what we're talking about. That, that one. And they came, the day they came, you see, service, service day. So it's not your offering. But yet it was an offering. A man's gift, the literal word for that word gift, one of the synonyms there is your offering. It will make it, it will give you access. When Solomon offered offering, he prospered. So it will prosper you. Number three, no time. Your offering will set up a memorial before God. Your offering will set up a memorial before God. What is a memorial? A memorial is something that God sees and he remembers you. Something that God sees and he remembers you. Let me tell you something. Let us be plain. 200 naira. God cannot see it. (laughs) See, you know, sometimes I don't know why you are laughing. I just say it the way it is. 200 naira. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. He said, I want to be a pillar in this house. Father, make me a financial pillar. You now gave, came to the altar, finished crying, dropped 5,000. He cannot, let me tell you, he cannot remember. I'm telling you, he said, but if that's all you have, mm-hmm, that's the thing. If that is all you have, that's heavy. If that is all you have, offerings have weight. And the weight of your offering is the weight of the person. How much are you worth? You cannot tell me that you have 10 million in your account. And you say you want God to, you want to move hand, the hand of God. And you gave me 500,000. You are more weightier than that. Even you, you know. That that thing you gave, they move you. Let's stop deceiving all this thing that we do, you know, we wake up and we just do some things, we, then we now say, maybe, maybe God would... No, it doesn't work that way. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Colinus, a centurion of the band called Italian Band. Verse 2. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. 3. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel coming into the house and said unto him, Colinius, Uh huh. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms have come up for me before as a memorial before the Lord. There's a level of giving, an offering you give. I tell you. Huh? They make consultation the day evil comes. They say, Was it not this? Even in the Bible, it's obvious. Jesus was, a man said, come and hear myself. He said, I'm not going. They said, go to his house. He said, why? He said, he single-handedly built us a house. It's written in your Bible. It comes as a memorial. 
Some of us have not learned certain things. Never you do something in the house of God, except it's by contribution, and you wait for them to pay you back. Be wise enough. Even if it's your last, I say, don't worry. Go back and be crying. My last, that, they do. God sees something. Today's generation, we're losing something. You want to be paid as a cleaner in the house of God. That's why I've been saying it. You play instruments, they can bless you. But don't place a tag. You will not prosper. And it's not only you. The children coming out from your loins too. The poverty has afflicted them. Be rather rather ready, ready. I want to teach you something about offering. Are you there? Are you with me? There is something called consistent giving. Consistent offering. Meaning that you can give an offering anywhere, any day, any time. It is not only when you come to the house of God. You can be driving and something turns on you. Give God an offering. It's an ancient secret. It's not only when we come to church, we dance. You know, we dance glory, glory. No. You can be going to work and you escape a fatal accident and you say, Lord, I thank you. Ah! This would have. And maybe that thing happened on a Thursday. You have the account. Say, Lord, an offering of thanksgiving. This is, I'm showing you a higher principle of operation. Don't wait until it's only, it's only when you come to service you cast offerings. No. Offerings are done. Sometimes a rema dawns on you in the toilet. Hits you. That's your access. They are giving you liberation. You say, thank you, Lord. Ah! I never saw it like this. Pull out your phone and say, Lord, I, I'm, I'm giving you an offering for this. I'm giving you an offering. First Chronicles 15, 26. A man who give consistent offering will receive consistently from the Lord. The Bible says, and it came to pass when God helped the Levite that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, that they offered what? Seven bullocks and seven rams. You know in Luke 6 38 it says, Give and it shall be given. Give me Luke chapter 13, verse 7. We'll read 7 to 9. You see where God was talking about a tree occupying a space. And he says, I constantly come here to feed this thing for three years. I want to show you a principle there. That when you consistently cast your offerings before God, thanking him day and night for three years, I tell you, you will never be empty. Then said he unto the dressers of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbaret it the ground? Why are you covering the ground? Verse 8. And he asked me, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. That means give it one more opportunity. Verse 9. And if it be a fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Let me tell you something. Whether you serve in the house of God, you do anything, no matter what, try and give God offerings. Because God, it's not just God loves a cheerful giver. No, I'm showing you the spiritual principles and transactions that follow it. Are you with me? Are you there? Verse 
The last thing before we close is you must understand and learn the principle of honoring men of God as priests. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. Honor them. 1 Timothy 5 17. No matter who the person is, so long as the name of God is upon the person, is a man of God. Don't give him something you have used, something that is of no value. The remaining fish head, now you put for him, don't you give up. And one of the eye of the fish. <laughs> you say, hungry man of God, you drag her. Erika, honor. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the world and doctrine. Give me the message translation. Honor them. Give a bonus to leaders who do a good job, especially the ones who work hard at preaching and teaching. Are you seeing something? Every day your man of God is here. At least give him some honor. Honor the man. You know in Proverbs 3 it says, Honor the Lord with your substance. Don't just say, Well done sir, well done sir. Honor with an offering. Are you with me? Very important. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4. Why do I do that? So I'm closing with this so I can take one or two questions. And if there be none, we'll just thank him and go home. Have we been blessed so far? Have you learned something? Maybe one of these is I'll teach you the spirituality of offerings. Why you don't steal it. And the consequences of touching it if you are not ordained for it. I remember a story that was given of a woman who had a son. She waited for that boy and finally the boy was born. And as the boy was growing up, she perceived that there was something coming out, shooting out. It looks like a hunchback. And she wept and cried and took her last savings, rubbed it on the boy's body. Rubbed it and said, Lord, you took this pain and came to the altar and cast it. So, <laughs> one of the ushers who was to pack the bags, because they used bag, saw the envelope and turned. I will teach you the mystery of the accustings. Huh? And took it and put it in his pocket. So long as it was in his pocket, he went to. He took that money, bought things, bought clothes, wore. The moment he wore it that night, something came on him. After a few weeks, he started developing hunchback. The woman's son was healed. The usher. <laughs> There's a law of transference. Huh? Why did not the prophet collect from Naaman and Gehazi went? He said, are you now? Are you okay? Are you not seeing the CZ? You're not supposed to collect. Now, for collecting, the leprosy of the guy has come. Because the moment that the thing was hovering, and the prophet said, he may call. <laughs> and his servant was not wise, collect. Be wise. Let me preach it to three people. Be wise. It's the spirituality of offerings, I'm telling you. You don't know the tears that go behind the offerings people give. And the seed. If you are, haven't you seen people who collect and they start having, I've seen people who run mad, start having migraine. It's as a result of what you collected. Were you ordained for it? That's why as you grow, God gives you weight. No matter what people bring. Because principalities offers. Some witches come to church and they cast offering. If you, the man of God, is not heavy enough. 
That's why you are careful in the use of it. They used to buy equipment, used to buy things. It's not all of them used to buy food. Because prostitutes also come to church. After overnight market. Then they come from out of the, the, the offering, the offer. You discover that you use the offering that a prostitute give to pay your children's school fees from stealing it. Your daughter grow up along the road. <laughs> 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 Are you with me? This is Ada. <laughs> Where is that scripture? Put it there. Hebrews 5 4. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Giftings, I am called of God. It's not a honor I took. I have served. There's no church you can say, you know me, I, I broke out. And I ran with two, two members. Nobody, no man of God can say, what you did to me, may your children do it to you. I did nothing. Absolutely nothing. The last Catholic church I attended was in Gerard. I came with my Bible, sat outside. And Jesus told me, this is the last day. I wrote it on that Bible, I'll bring it one day. This is the last day. I wrote the date and the time. You will attend the Catholic church. I will show you what you do. I went back to school. I know the day the anointing came. I know the calling. And I'm like, I'm where going to carry out. I don't, I don't, we don't read Bible. Except the one we read at home. That my daddy, and his Igbo Bible, because he wants us to learn Igbo. Tonuja! Tonun Hey! Ah, Jehovah, we are actually that did you know why you're You'll be hearing it early in the morning, 4 30. Anya Bia wo Anya Bia is a Jesus. My dad is even better. Let my mommy not lead prayer. Mbem boro gezam chile keo yebe So it's some oh yeah, you are going to preach today. So I preach. Read it, you read. Mostly Sam. Who opens scriptures? So when I go back and listen to my message, I'm a mystery. I watch it, I say, how did I get to this level? Because I know my background. So I tell you, no Bible, no Bible, no Bible school, no theological school, no sitting under a man of God to say, Oh yeah, do it like this, do it like that. No. Everything has been him. It's raw. And yet, the guy is exposing scriptures. And you are looking at it and you are like, and you tell me God did not call me. Show me, show me the ones they call. I've seen this hand in sanity. What haven't I seen? And yet, those things are still in their training section. There's still something deeper to be reviewed. So I sit down. I'm a mystery to myself. I watch myself. That's why you don't see me with ha- having issues with any man of God. We started at St. Gerard Catholic Church. We started it. I will tell them. I show you the streets where we used to park. We carry the, the chair, we water, we fold that on Sundays. Is this in Flavius Or is this in Dominic? Or is this in Dennis? Sacred Heart? Our Lady of Fatima? Who tell you all of them? What do you want? Every now and then, Father Salachi will always hold put his hand on my head. That's the one in St. Dennis, till he died. So what do you want to see? I, I, you, the worst is, we never even attended any fellowship. It's you either go to charismatic or... So I can tell you the very first person who said, this one is going to serve God. So, what I see in Christianity today sometimes baffles me. In the past words I use, sometimes I'm scared for this one. How do you stop and pull out? How do you start something? Is that how God is? You people don't have fear. You just live. You dream small. Hmm. What is that? I dream. 
What did you dream? I see where people gather. I was healing them, healing them. So, healing Messiah to the world. International ministry. Or God is not like that. I dragged with him. No, don't, I don't understand this. This is what you, this is your path. So I see the signs that of a truth I was called for. Give me the scriptures. Give me any scripture. And that thing will come. I know that thing. When it comes, I know it. When I see affliction, even in the boss, when I see someone who is sick, like I know, that thing comes. I know that thing. The name is what I do, but I know that thing. But I know it. And it comes when you are provoked. To cause. I know it. But the first one he told me when Jesus told me, he said, don't cause. So it's easy to kill by cause. My poor gone. But we don't. Because we were warned. So, when you bring me biscuit, I have, I'm entitled to eat it. And if you brought, if, if you brought it from the coven, I will eat it. Galatians 6 verse 6. Prepare your message if you, if you have a question. Galatians 6. I've tried for tonight, right? Clap for me, clap for me. Now let's clap for Jesus. Let him that is taught in the word have taught you. Communicate to him that teacheth you in all good things. Not that when you see me taking pepper soup, you say, Fah! Why did he take him pepper soup? <laughs> I have taught you. Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever I man sow it, you shall reap. Verse 8. Verse 8. You removed it. Be, okay. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Thank you, Jesus. I'm done.